What's up, everybody? Time to do a bit more car work. Yeah. Okay, so this time we're going to change the oxygen sensor on the car. Um, this one's kind of a pain to get to, but not too bad. Could be a little easier, but it's not. Hey, Asher. Damn dog. Sorry. Dog, because he was in a house. It's a, he doesn't roam too far, and he's really good. He's probably the best dog I've ever had. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're going to change the front bank O2 sensor on this car. These, uh, this car is a four-cylinder car. only has one exhaust system, so it has two O2 sensors on it. One upstream and one downstream from the catalytic converter. The one that's upstream is the one I believe is bad, and I'm going to show you why I think that is. Uh, so I'm gonna get the car started though But right there got my sandy dandy stand tool And we're gonna hook that up and show you what the, the what the front and rear bank O2 sensors are actually sending to the ECU And that's why I, and then I'll show you on there Why I believe the the rear one is fine and the front one is probably the bad one. So um, I don't say hang on here Tell you good all right, yeah, you should, uh, the red button. Yeah, I got it. Is it recording now? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my OBD2 uh, reader here. You can't just use any OBD2 uh, scanner for this. Uh, mine particularly, it doesn't just tell me trouble codes. I can actually look at what exactly the signals that are coming from the, the O2 sensors, um, what kind of fuel is going through the fuel injectors, and all that kind of stuff. So a little bit more, uh, up, you know, not high end, but not the low end one either. So we hook this up and we're going to hook it up to the OBD2 port in the car, which is right underneath the driver's dash area. Plug this in first. Ah, come on over here. And now Asher wants to come along. <laughs> Asher wants to come along for the quote unquote ride. <laughs> okay. So, we? We'll point yep. over here. Let me see the phone. There you go. Okay. Right down here. See, so we have what's called a hum diagnostic thing. It's actually plugged into our OD2 port right here. So, I'm going to unplug it temporarily. Plug my scan tool in. Make sure I'm facing the right way. Um, no, I think it's backwards, so. I can't tell. Ah, there we go. I think I was trying to plug into the wrong thing there. Okay, now we're plugged in. All right. So now we got that on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the car up. Once I figure out, I think my, my think I put my keys underneath me. Yes. Silly Billy. Right, clutch in. Yeah, that's the sense of her keys. All right. So now, to link, hit that button there. I know it's going to give me a code for warm wrap catalyst before uh, below threshold. Uh, random misfire detected, that's old. Shouldn't be any of that anymore. And I always get mixed up on which, which button to hit to. Alright. Okay, so fuel system. So calculated load 45.8. I <coughs> uh, forget what the STFT and LTFT are. We keep coming down. Engine RPM 2130. No, it's not up that high. I'm idling at 750. Why is it saying 2137? Oh, it's freeze frame. Vehicle speed 17. <laughs> Even though I'm not even moving. All right, so how about, let's go ahead and clear all this stuff, erase it. Now, 
No DTCs are present. I don't need enhanced DTCs. I just why? No, I don't want that. I'm not driving a Chrysler. I don't use this tool enough, so. Just trying to get diagnostic, uh, like what's, what the car is actually doing. Find nope, don't have Nissan there, so press DTC to exit. Why isn't this gonna give me? Don't know why this isn't giving me any information here. Weird. Let's start. Let's stop the car again and because I need to be. I'm trying to show what the O2 sensors are showing, but all right, to link all right, and then hit that. But just because there's no DTCs doesn't mean I don't want to see what's the what's being shown okay how about we just do this I'll just change the sensor and I'll explain why I think it's that sensor so while the engine was running, normally when I last time I looked at it with the, the engine running with that scan tool hooked up, the front bank sensor I think was reading um, up around like two volts or something like that, or up above one volt at least. I can't remember what the exact number was, but the, the front and rear should both actually be in um, down more like half a volt, and they should be at least a certain amount off from each other too. But yeah, but not too not so far off that it triggers what's going on there which means uh if, it, if it's if they're too far apart they start getting this uh, warm-up catalyst efficiency uh below um, efficiency whatever which means the the manifold down here on the exhaust side of my engine which i don't know if i can show very well that's the back side of my engine um uh, Anyway, there, there's a there's a warm up catalyst right after it exit, you know, exits the headers, which are the ones that are hooked up to the engine itself. Then it goes down, and there's another uh, warm up catalyst down there. Uh, and then you have the O2 sensor on this car. And then you go further back, and there's a catalytic converter, kind of underneath the body of the car, and then another O2 sensor behind the cat. All right, so. The, the front bank sensor was reading too high. It, it's, it's too far apart from the other, you know, the, the distance between what its signal is and what the, the one on the other side of the catalytic converter is reading or sending are too far apart, which is why I think the, the sensor over here is uh, possibly stuck in the wrong loop. There's a closed and open loop mode. I just can't remember the detail on it, but so that's why I'm going to go ahead and just replace this O2 sensor and show you a little bit of a pin in the butt, but it is what it is. Uh, I have a creeper, but it's, uh, I can't, I don't have a lot of room here. If I have the creeper, it's harder for me to access, uh, to work with my arms. So I'm just going to crawl underneath. Okay, right there is the warm up catalyst that I'm talking about. And right behind it, over here, yeah, this wire right here is the one that goes to the O2 sensor, which is right here on the top of the exhaust. Oh, 
don't know if you're going to be able to see very well, but see what we can do. Might need to wait for this to cool off some too. So far, hopefully this is, oh, that's a lie. Got to just get the, I have a, now there's an O2 sensor socket you can use. I actually have it, but the problem is not much room to work with there. I can't get the socket and the ratchet both on there. So I'm just using one of these adjustable jaw wrench or what most people know is a crescent wrench. Crescent wrench is actually, crescent is actually the name of a company. So this kind of wrench is not necessarily called a crescent wrench. If it's made by someone other than crescent, it's not technically a crescent wrench, but we all know if you call a crescent wrench a crescent wrench, whatever, it's anything that looks like one is also one. Of little faith. I have to feel. I can't see what's. I'm trying to figure out which direction I'm turning the wrench, but I can't see it. There we go. I think. Oh, come on. Getting it on the wrong part of the. Oh, what a pain in the butt. pain in the ass I might need to take this uh, this cross piece off over here behind it because it's kind of interfering with either this or the the plate here they both interfere with the wrench but I'm having a hard time getting the wrench adjusted to the right size because I seem to have trouble getting it on the right part of it yeah maybe that'll take more parts off than I need to either. Oh, that looks, yeah, I think I got it. game with me wrench what I hate about adjustable jaw wrenches that O2 socket yeah yeah all right I might have an idea here okay. yeah here Chloe okay so O2 sensor socket special is it's just a deep well socket that has this right here now I need to make sure it's the right size though but this this hole here is for to accommodate the wire for the O2 sensors uh, connector so I just don't know uh, somehow I've cut myself I don't know where Ow. probably on the sharp piece that I just that I felt over here I found a rock and no, it was there's not enough room I can't even get to see that in there that one is heat shield there um, I 
literally see the blood on it. Wait, can I see the hint that you had this on real quick? I might have to take this off and hopefully it's hopefully it's nut plates and not nuts on here. Okay. I guess. Uh, I might need a I can't tell what size this is. Maybe a twelve or a ten. Maybe a twelve millimeter. Or a twelve a millimeter? Loose. A twelve millimeter that looks like this. Yeah, I gotta take this bracket thing off. Okay. It's in my way. I can't I can't very effectively work with this uh sensor because the bracket interferes. Got it. Yeah, it's probably a number 12. Number so 12? Probably like a 12 millimeter socket or a box wrench would be great. What's a box wrench? It's one where it's going to close all the way around. Got it. This one wasn't very tight. This had to have been off before. <laughs> okay, this last one. I don't really necessarily need to take it all the way off, but I do need to loosen it so I can at least swing this, uh, this bracket out of the way. I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and take it all, I don't know, all the way off. No, that'll work. See, it's still on. I have a little bit more room to work with. I think I can get this wrench at a more preferable spot, too. I'm also going to have the fun of... Oh, it plugs in right there. Okay. Okay, I might need a hammer or something to... Because these... This is going to be a pain in the ass sometimes when they've never been off before. All right, can you have me a hammer, please? Sure. Uh, just any kind of like a regular claw or ball pin or whatever. Uh, okay, like a regular. Wait. I have a mallet down there too. I think the second to bottom drawer. Second to bottom drawer. Second to bottom. That's the third. Bottom, not top. Oh. Second from the bottom. Second from the bottom. Where? Locate the bottom door and go one up from it. Okay. That's the bottom. Okay, so here it is. Uh, what does it look like? Any kind of hammer. Any right mm, kind of hammer. Yeah, I might need to use the bottom door. Okay. I know there's one in there because it's too busy to use it. Brass mallet or whatever it is that I have. I don't really care. This? No, that's a razor bar. Okay. That'd be great if I could put the socket on it, but I can't. I know what a hammer is, but you bang on the nails with it. Yeah, that. Like this? Yeah, that. That'll work. Okay. 
And then I can strike the end of the hammer, uh, end of the wrench with. <laughs> so I try to get it. A breaker bar would be great, but uh, What's a breaker? Or, uh, not, not a breaker bar, but a cheater bar. Alright, make this as, make sure it's on there good and safe. Yeah. Hard to get both hands on this, so. Come on, don't come on, don't on me. Yes, it is loose. It's loose? Yeah, now let me unplug it. And figure out where the clip is at. What's a clip? The clip that keeps it secured in there. Okay. Here, though. Gotta be careful, I don't want to pull the wire out either. Uh, I might need a really long screwdriver. Okay. Something I can pull on the clip with at the same time that I'm in my other hand is working trying to pull that connector out. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's still up to a five or a long. Second door from the top. Second door. Bye. This one? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Something I can press on the press on the little clip thing while I'm pulling the, the connector out. Nice. That's, what I, that's how I think it's set up. <coughs> Quite the right angle on it. There we go. Now we're disconnected. Okay. Yeah, and this exhaust isn't too hot. It shouldn't be hard to get out from here. Sensor. That's the sensor? Yep. Now we gotta go over and get the other one. A sensor that looks like that. This is an O2 sensor. O2 sensor. Oxygen sensor. More oxygen. Get that way. Okay. So this one sends a bolted signal to the ECM. Okay. There's another one just like it further back. <coughs> it's also sent the signal, and that's what the ECM is doing. It's comparing the, sent the signals being sent by these two. If they're too close to each other or too far apart, it tells you there's something wrong. Usually it's the sensor itself, but not <coughs> always. Um, Got we'll it. Go in and get the, the new sensor from Nathan. From my brother Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, where's that O2 sensor at? The new one. Oh, is this thing right here? Yeah, this is it right here. 
Yeah, mom told right. me to pass. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, mom told me okay. to put on your nightstand. All right. I'm going to put the new one on and hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, once you're done, Chloe, you got homework. So we're going to do the same steps, but except in reverse. <laughs> where's, uh, where's Asher? Asher, we oh. know. Is he in the house? Asher. That's all for him. He was out here with us originally. I don't, I don't know if he went in with Nathan or. Oh, there he is. Yeah, sir, get over here. I don't. Definitely hey. stay away from that yard. You know, you know, you don't like those people. They don't like you. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on in. Okay. Good boy. Yeah, you. Yeah, please eat. Oh, all right. Dad, look. All right, turn toward me, camera. Now you know why I like that dog so much. <laughs> he doesn't bark much, and he's so easy to get back in the house when we need him to be there. <laughs> Dad, Never had a dog that good. Dad, Dad. He, he doesn't stray too far. And here's here's the damage. <coughs> oh, that's so bad. Yeah, it looks worse than it is. It's kind of like a paper cut. <laughs> I also found this. Here's my dad's blood on this. I tried to scrape some off. Okay, so. Oh, we got a <coughs> twist tie on here. New O2 sensor. Get that off. So there's a plastic cover. Plastic cover. Gonna need to take that off too. That's a little bit different, but not too much. It looks yeah. a bit the same as the one that was in there. Kind of used to this. Is actually. this connector the same? <coughs> what did I put the old one? Right there. Close! That's not the same hookup. But yeah, it doesn't. Okay, this isn't going to work. Frick! That explains why, yeah, they were kind of wondering why well, why one was like fed spec and one was Kelly or whatever. All right, so Man. this ain't going to work. That's right. We need an O2 sensor that looks like this with the same end. Yeah. Just like this. Glad we found that out now. I'm going to take it back to the... Yep. Part store and get a different one. Yeah, looks like. They aren't cheap. This one costs $180. $180. You know, they used to be a lot cheaper than that. Used to be I could get one for like $60 to $100. Now they're like three times as much. Even more for Cali spec. Oh, I won't need that. So we're going to place that, the old buddy, back inside where. Back inside its old home. Yeah. So now we're gonna watch my dad place it back in. <laughs> this is almost like an hour long video, but except it's not. Get on the right. Okay. It's on there. Now we'll have to put it back in. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Let me see how you leave it today. That's why I didn't want to pull too hard on the 
well, a connector either because you never know when something like this comes up. I'm trying to get it to made in, but it won't. Also, a fact about my dad and my dog, they sometimes wrestle and my dog can sometimes do bites. But he's very friendly. When my mom is around, those two get to play. <laughs> it's pretty much a fun time for them. Can't seem to get this thing in there. I can get it up in there, but it won't latch. What do you mean it won't latch? There's a clip there and it latches in. I can't get it in there far enough to latch. Okay. Got it? Nope. <coughs> what is this thing? A piece of trash in here? The frick? Yeah, it is trash. How did trash get under our car and into it? Is it tricky to get it in there? What's up? Is it getting... Did it get more trickier in there? I'm just... I can't seem to get it to uh, connect. I can get it into the slot, but I can't get it to lock in. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I think it's in now. All right. Now, we have Sorry. to put this back ah. on. classmates were making um like well, a cabinet i told them what your technique was and it was to first screw it by hand then see how much <laughs> i could do with the screwdriver extreme finger tape remember yeah can you do me a favor can you um uh oh hang on here i'll show you you won't know what you're looking for yeah i will show you <laughs> okay. I want to say it's a 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter hard. Okay, this one here wouldn't be ideal. Um, just, oh, where's my thing? I don't have my 11. That's right. Eh, why not? You can use these. Is there a, it's a 12 millimeter. I, I think that's what size that nut is. Might be an 11. It, it looks too big to be a 10, so 12 is my nuts. Likely, yes. Let's give it a shot. Well, my dad struggles <laughs> to get under there. It is indeed a 12. It's 
See how much easier this is to turn? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get it all the way on as much as I can with fingers. Now remember the other rule, get all the hardware started first before you tighten any of them. Hardware start first, then before you get anywhere with any of them. Love you, Dada. Love you too. A bit more easier now? And to help, to help you guys out with where it's at, this is that is just behind the front tires on my car. And if this happens to you guys, this video could help you guys out. After we're done with this video, I'm doing my homework. Yes. So you usually want to do these in a crisscross pattern uh, when you tighten them back down. Look at that. Small hard, small harbor like this. Not too concerned about it. <laughs> what else is down here? Oh, this wrench. I'll just get out of there. All right, we'll do what's called a, when, a, when we were in aircraft maintenance, they called it a tool and fod check. Tool and fod check? What does that mean? Okay, so <coughs> tool and fod check. Basically, you're supposed to inventory all your tools, and make sure you have everything that you brought in with you. Make sure it's not still on the equipment you're working on. Of course, in this case, it's a car, but for many years for me, it was an airplane. And then FOD is a, an acronym for foreign object debris or foreign object damage, depending on which context you're working on. So, everything's good. We're gonna go ahead and put everything away. Yep. Um, that's kind of how you change a no. That's kind of how you change a no. That's basically how you change an O2 sensor on the 24. This is a 2014 Nissan Sentra. What are you pointing? All right. Um, even I wasn't able to replace the actual sensor. You at least saw the process. It's not too hard. It was just kind of a pain in the ass, but <laughs> it is what it is. All right. Now let's... And, anyway, any parting words? Have a good day. Make sure that the O2 sensor in your car does not break down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it will. <laughs> All right. Peace. I knew, I knew. See you guys. Bye-bye.